What I'd like to do now is start talking about the Java fork join framework implementation internals relating to work stealing, which is really what gives the fork join framework its definitive power and its particular uh, interesting characteristics. So recall that worker threads in a fork join pool are designed to do as much as they possibly can. As long as there is work to do, we want those worker threads to do that work. And another way of looking at this is we don't want worker threads to block, in other words, park themselves and go to sleep, unless there are absolutely no tasks or subtasks left available to run at all. So as long as there is something to do, worker threads will be doing it. Now, why does it work this way? Well, the reason it works this way is because blocking threads and by potentially extension cores in modern multi-core processors is actually very expensive. Shutting something down, shutting a core down and then restarting it takes quite a number of cycles. And again, if you wanna learn more about this, take a look at Doug Lee's excellent talk at the link below where he explains this, uh, this issue and talks about some of the interesting quirks that the Java environment does in order to make sure that the threads don't block if there's nothing for them to do, or unless there's absolutely nothing for them to do. So therefore, each worker thread in a fork join pool, instead of blocking, when it doesn't have anything in its deck, it will look around at other decks owned by other worker threads in the pool, trying to find other tasks or subtasks to run. And this is the whole concept of work stealing. So basically, remember the whole idea here is if you have nothing to do, then you will do something by stealing somebody else's work and then you'll steal their work and you'll be able to do work. And the way that this is designed is that busy threads, in other words, threads that are busy doing something, uh, they will keep working on stuff at the head of their deck idle threads or threads that don't have anything else to do at the moment will then go and steal work or try to steal work from the tail of the busy threads decks. And the reason it steals from the, from the tail, of course, is because that way there's not going to be as much a chance for contention between a given worker thread, which is working on its head of its deck and otherwise idle worker threads that'll be trying to steal from the tail. And this kind of comes back to some other discussions we've had about how you can implement very clever uh, concurrent queues or decks in this case that have locks at the head and locks at the tail, thereby making it possible to optimize the performance. Now, the other thing that these, these uh, worker threads do is that they will steal from random decks. So in other words, there's a kind of a random number generator that's used and rather than always going and trying to steal from, you know, thread three's deck, instead they will randomly steal from random decks, thereby trying to minimize contention. Because of course, if you always stole from the same uh, threads deck, then you would end up with lots of threads converging and it would make it have more contention than you would really like to have. So the stealing is done in a random way. Tasks are stolen in FIFO order. Remember that a given worker thread works on its deck of tasks in LIFO order, last in, first out order, which is a stack, but stealing is done in the opposite order, in FIFO order, first in, first out. So you're always stealing from the tail of the deck. And the reason for this, as I alluded to a moment ago, is to minimize contention with the worker thread that actually owns the deck. So the worker thread is trying to basically get work off of its head, whereas other threads are stealing work off of its tail. Now, another reason for doing it this way is if you steal things that have been in the queue the longest, then chances are you're gonna be stealing larger units of work. And the reason that this happens is because of the divide and conquer nature of the way that fork join tasks are typically designed to split their given work in half. So typically, if you start out with the whole data source to work on, let's say you have some array of a thousand items. And so when you first call fork, it'll fork into two subtasks that'll each have say 500 items in it. 
And then that will keep forking. And you keep forking, forking, forking until you end up with, you know, items of size one. And the way that those will go into the work queue is you'll start out with the first task would have a thousand items. Then you'll have two more tasks of 500 each and then four more tasks of 250 each and so on and so forth. And so the basic long and the short of it is things that are at the tail of the deck typically encompass a larger span of work to process. So large chunks are pushed onto the deck before smaller chunks because of the way that splitting occurs. And therefore, when a thread steals, it'll typically steal a larger task or subtask from the end of the deck. And that means that when that thread starts to do the processing and it starts to do its splitting, it'll start by doing recursive decompositions of larger elements. And once again, it will push larger elements onto its deck. So the whole idea here is we're trying to partition things as evenly as possible. We're trying to partition things as large as possible so that further splitting can occur in very convenient ways. Now, the actual work queue deck that implements work stealing is also carefully designed to minimize lock contention. And if you want to learn more about the typical data structure and algorithms that are used, take a look at the link at the bottom of the slide, which is a paper that talks about work stealing decks. And this is essentially the same algorithm that's used by the Java fork join pool and its work stealing uh, queues and decks. Push and pop, which are the operations on the work queue, are only called by the owning worker thread. And internally, these methods use so-called weight-free compare and swap operations. And remember, we talked about compare and swap much earlier when we were talking about atomic operations in Java. And we talked about things like atomic integer and atomic long and so on and so forth. And they basically uh, don't ever block. So they only spin. There's also another method called pull, which can be called from another worker thread to try to steal a subtask from a different worker thread. And these particular implementations may not always be weight free. And again, if you take a look at the paper by Doug Lee, he kind of talks about why that is. You can also take a look at the implementation overview comment section inside of the fork join pool source code to get very, very detailed discussions of how all the implementation works. And it is absolutely fascinating to read how it works. Uh, I, I highly recommend you take a look. If you click on the link at the bottom of the slide, you'll find the source code for the Java 8 version of this stuff. And it's certainly worth reading, trying to understand. Uh, sadly, the actual methods in the class have very, very few comments, which is a shame. And they're also written in a very kind of C-like manner with lots of low-level bit fiddling and so on to make them very efficient. But the comment in the implementation overview part is quite extensive, and it gives you a pretty good idea of how things are working under the hood. So that's the end of the overview of Java fork join framework internals. First, we covered worker threads and how they work, and then we talked about how the worker threads implement the work stealing algorithm, and the whole goal is to try to maximize utilization. And it's very powerful, very scalable, and uh, really represents quite an advance relative to the other thread pool implementations that came with earlier versions of the Java executor framework, such as the cache thread pool and the fixed size thread pool, which are not nearly as flexible and adaptive and optimized as the Java fork join framework.